Mr. Robert Hunter, manager, Placid Valley Rural Electric Cooperative. Dear Mr. Hunter, you may be surprised to know that although I won your co-op's essay contest this spring, I'm finding it a bit difficult to write this letter. I guess it's because there is so much I want to tell you that if I wrote it all down, it would fill a book. What I'm referring to, of course, is our trip to Washington, D.C. The excitement began to build up right at the start of our trip. By the time we reached Washington, we were all riding on a high wave of anticipation and fun. The first thing we realized when we arrived in Washington was that we were not alone. Thousands of students from all over the nation visit Washington each spring, and there were several hundred from 20 states in our group sponsored by the Rural Electric Co-ops. We were in a hurry to get into our motel rooms and get started seeing the city. We only had a few days and we wanted to make the most of them. The first morning in Washington, we all gathered in a big auditorium at the motel to be officially welcomed. We heard Mr. Clyde Ellis, general manager of the National Rural Electric Cooperative Association, say, I, I do hope you all enjoy your trip to Washington and that it gives you a new perspective about your government. I hope you will never let anybody make you believe that your government is something way off apart from you when as a matter of fact it is you. As you visit these magnificent buildings, see the great monuments of the greatest capital of the greatest nation of the world, don't forget that it's all yours and that the government itself is you. And then we were off. First, to the White House. And did we get a thrill when we were greeted by President Johnson himself. Mr. and Miss Rural America, the President of the United States. Mr. Ellis, and my young friends, uh, I'm very proud to welcome to the White House today this wonderful group of allowance spending, uh, chaperone managed, free, private, young Americans. Over the years of my public career, no other domestic activity has been closer to my heart and the program which has lighted the homes and the lives of rural America. And that's our program of rural electric cooperatives. <laughs> the contribution that rural electrification has made to our nation's strength and success can never be measured adequately. And now we see its finest result in the talent and the intelligence and the enthusiasm of you young men and women who have so much to offer our country. In a very real sense, the REA program the last 30 years is symbolic of the purpose that is always first in the hearts of Americans. Wherever it's hard to describe the excitement we felt at being so close to the president. The he said many things to us, but I'll never forget how I felt when he said, I have the highest confidence that you will, by your hands and your hearts, turn on many lights at home and in the world to make this a brighter world for your fellow man. And to uh, Congressman Ellis and others who have contributed so much to so many in bringing you here. I say thank you and well done. From the White House, we went to the Capitol building. The people in Washington call it the Hill. One of our senators met us there. For me, as I'm sure is true of millions of other people, that magnificent Capitol dome is the symbol of the United States government, the democratic process, and the very concept of democracy, all wrapped up in one, and it makes quite an impressive package. 
the senator took us inside to see where the Congress meets. But we couldn't stay long, for we had a lot of ground to cover. Just across the way from the east front of the Capitol is the U.S. Supreme Court. This, of course, is one of the three branches of the government, the judicial. We had just seen the White House, which represents the executive branch, and the Capitol, which represents the legislative branch. Near the Capitol are the Senate and House office buildings, where senators and representatives and their staffs do their individual work and hold their committee meetings. Around on the west front of the Capitol, you can look all the way down the mall, past the Washington Monument, to the Lincoln Memorial, and beyond. We decided to walk along the mall and take a look at some of the things on the way. The Interior Department is responsible for such things as federal dams for flood control, irrigation, electric power generation, and so on. Back on the mall itself is the Washington Monument, towering 555 feet above the earth as a splendid reminder of the greatness of our first president. Another short detour off the mall took us to the Jefferson Memorial, which sits alongside the Tidal Basin. This is the site of the annual Cherry Blossom Festival, but we arrived a bit too late in the year to see the trees in bloom. We saw the Agriculture Department, USDA as it's called. The north and south buildings of USDA are connected by an overhead passageway. After seeing the traffic in Washington, I can understand why. Although it was interesting to me because of my rural background, USDA's activities are much broader than just farming. Its agencies include the Farmer Cooperative Service, the Rural Areas Development Agency, the Rural Electrification Administration, which makes loans to electric and telephone cooperatives, and many other activities which help the American consumer. The Smithsonian Institution, which was founded by Mr. James Smithson, an Englishman who had never visited the United States, has become one of the most popular places to visit in Washington. We saw the Spirit of St. Louis, the airplane in which Charles Lindbergh made the first non-stop transatlantic flight. And we saw some things which were built a bit later, too. As we walked down the last few feet of the mall, past the beautiful reflecting pool, we stopped for a moment and looked up at the massive Lincoln Memorial. I was held there by its quiet strength and dignity. As we came near to the memorial and walked up the broad marble steps, I saw the great craggy face of Lincoln chiseled in a huge slab of white marble. As I looked at it and read the inscriptions from his speeches, I began to understand, for the first time perhaps, some of the reasons for his greatness. This was the president who said, this country, with its institutions, belongs to the people who inhabit it. As I looked back down the long stretch of the mall which we had traveled during the day, I felt as though I had been walking through the pages of history, but not dead history, history come to life. But there was little time for reflection in our group. We were suddenly on our way back to the motel to get ready for a big night. We were going to a shindig. I'm not sure I can describe it to you. I can tell you, though, that when it was over, we were really exhausted. The next morning, we took to our buses for some sightseeing outside the heart of town. First, we visited the office of the National Rural Electric Cooperative Association. As you know, this organization represents about 20 million rural people, including my mother and dad and all the others who own and operate the rural electric systems across the nation. At Mount Vernon, down the Potomac from the city, George Washington lived and planned and acted out much of the early history of this nation. The beauty is breathtaking, and the sense of history is so strong you can almost touch it. I was thinking about a lot of things, but mostly about what Mr. Ellis had told us. Each of us is a part of our government just the same as Washington, Lincoln, and Jefferson were. And just the same as the soldiers, and sailors, and Marines who have defended this nation throughout our history. And just the same as all the millions of men and women who have served this nation in peace and war. A visit to Arlington National Cemetery and the Tomb of the Unknowns 
brought this home to us forcefully. Maybe someday I'll be able to write well enough to describe how I felt when we placed a wreath at the grave of President John F. Kennedy. I'll have to wait and see. I know I don't have the words to do so now. Then we visited the Washington Cathedral. And some of the embassies. stop for a bit of fun at the zoo. After the zoo, we went back to the motel for a swim and a rest, which we needed by this time, before getting ready for our last big evening in Washington, a moonlit boat cruise down the Potomac. What a way to end our trip. Too soon, we were on our way back home. While we hated to leave, we were thankful for the opportunity to sit down. We saw a lot of things I haven't told you about. But as I said in the beginning, to describe it all would take a book, maybe more than one. Well, that's about it, I guess. I'm not sure I can sum it all up, and I'm not sure I should even try. But I know this. I understand now that this country in a very real sense, belongs to me and my millions of fellow Americans, that our government is not something set apart from us, but that our government is us. And I understand that all the museums and buildings and monuments are only symbols of an idea, the idea that Lincoln expressed so well when he talked about government of the people, by the people, for the people. I understand this, and I'm glad to be one of those people.